Hello everyone. Welcome back to Coding Hex. In this video, we are going to cover JavaScript interview questions. So you might be aware that JavaScript is a scripting language that is used to create and control dynamic website content. That is anything that moves, refreshes or otherwise changes on your screen without requiring you to manually reload a web page. So without wasting much time, let's start with our question number first. Our first question is how properties are assigned to an object. So there are different ways. We can use square bracket as well as dot operator to assign any property to a object. Question number two is, what is the way to get the status of a checkbox? So in this example, if the checkbox will be checked, this alert will return true. So here in the alert, we have checked whether this ID has checked attribute or not. Question number three is, what is the difference between double equal to and triple equal to? So double equal to checks only for the equality in values, whereas triple equal to checks either the value or the type of the two variables are equal or not. Question number fourth is, explain how to detect the operating system on the client machine. So we can use navigator dot platform property to check the operating system on the client machine. The next question is what is the function of delete operator? So delete is used to delete the property as well as the value. For example, we have an object named student in which we have two properties. These are age and batch. If you are writing delete student dot age, this will delete age property and its value that is 20 from the object student. Question number six is, what is the use of void zero? Void zero is used to prevent the page from refreshing and parameter zero is passed while calling. So it is also used to call another method without refreshing the page. Question number seventh is, what is the difference between an alert box and a confirmation box? An alert box displays only one button which is the OK button. But a confirmation box displays two buttons that is OK as well as cancel. Question number 8 is what are JavaScript cookies? So cookies are the small text files stored in a computer and it gets created when the user visits any website to store information that they need. Example, it could be username details and shopping card information from the previous visits. The next question is, what is the use of push method in JavaScript? So push method is used to add or append one or more elements to the end of an array. With this method, we can append multiple elements by passing multiple arguments. The next question is, what is unshift method in JavaScript? So unshift method is like push method which works at the beginning of the array. 
This method is used to prepend one or more elements to the beginning of the array. Our next question is explain window.onload and on document ready. So onload function is not run until all the information on the page is loaded. This leads to a substantial delay before any code is executed. Whereas on document ready loads the code just after the DOM is ready. This allows early manipulation of the code. Question number 12 is define event bubbling. So JavaScript allows DOM elements to be nested inside each other. In such case, if the handler of the child is clicked, the handler of parent will also work as if it were clicked to. So this whole, whole effect is called event bubbling. The next question is, what is the use of history object? The history object of a browser can be used to switch to history pages such as back and forward from the current page. So there are three methods which are history.back, history.forward and history.go in which we pass the number. And here number can be forward, it is can be positive for forward, it can be negative for backward. Question number 14 is, what is the difference between undefined value and null value? So undefined value is a value that is not defined and has no keyword. and null value that is explicitly specified by the keyword null. Here we have given two examples. In first example, we have used int that number which is of integer type and this in a number and in this the number has undefined value. Whereas if you look at the another example that is string str is equal to null here str string has a null value. The next question is what is JavaScript strict mode? So strict mode is a restricted variant of JavaScript. Usually this language is not very strict in throwing errors but if we write strict mode it will throw errors of all the types even they are silent errors. Thus, the process of debugging becomes easier and the chances of making mistake in the code is also reduced. So this is a very important question. Question number 16 is, what are self-invoking functions? So these are known as immediately invoked function expressions. These are also called as self-executing anonymous function. And we have a term that is iffy. If we talk about the full form of the iffy, it is only immediately invoked function expression. So these functions are invoked automatically in the code. So therefore that is known as self-invoking functions. We have described the or given the example or the syntax of self-invoking function. Question number 17 is why JavaScript is called as a loosely typed or dynamic language? JavaScript is called as a loosely typed or a dynamic language because JavaScript variables are not directly associated with any value type and any variable can be assigned or reassigned value of all the types. 
for example firstly we have a variable that is my var which is string and then we are reassigning it to boolean and then again reassigning it to a number question number 18 is what is closure and this is a very important question so the closure is a primary mechanism to private the data items closures give access to the outer function scope from inner function scope closures are created for every function in javascript so in order to define a closure create a function inside another function to expose it the next question is explain the terms synchronous and asynchronous code the synchronous code is something that should be finished before anything else can happen or in another words the synchronous code is blocking and the asynchronous code is something in which actions can happen and is not dependent on another actions so in another words asynchronous code are non blocking question number 20th is explain the term array slice method and array splice method again this is a very important question array slice method removes the array items from the array and reforms the removed item into a new array and array splice method removes the items of the selected array from the array and does not form another array the next question is can redirection of a page is possible in javascript well redirection of page is possible by using the two ways these are location.href and location.replace The next question is how to remove and add properties from object so by using object dot property name equal to value we can add a property to the javascript object whereas by using delete object dot property name it is used to remove the property from the javascript object we have already studied the delete prop of uh, delete method to delete the property from an object the next question is what is the difference between type of and instance of operators in javascript so type of operator returns a string of what the type the operand is whereas instance of operator does not work with primitive data types but works with objects and checks on what type the object is our next question is name some of the javascript frameworks we have various frameworks but popular one are angular and vue and if we talk about the react js it is not a framework it is a javascript library the next question is what are anonymous functions in javascript so anonymous function allows a developer to create a function that has no name in another words these functions can be used to store a bit of functionality in a variable and pass that piece of functionality around this is the syntax of the anonymous function the
the next question is what is dom so dom stands for document object model it is an object oriented representation of the html all the elements or nodes are part of window dot document so if we inspect using the f12 of an into any browser or we can say into chrome then we can see the dom of the complete web page the next question is what is the difference between window and document in javascript so javascript window is a global object which holds variables functions history location whereas the document also come under window and can be considered as the property of the window the next question is what is the difference between inner html and inner text inner html will process an html found tag if found in a string whereas inner text will not look at this example we are using document dot query selector of p tag where we are assigning dot inner html to one br tag then two which gives the output one and two in two different lines because because we are using a break tag but if we write the complete statement using dot inner text then this will going to display this the complete statement that is one br tag two as the output the next question is what is the difference between html collection and node list the function query selector all returns node list in which for each can be used directly to traverse that elements whereas get element by class name or tag name returns an html collection which does not have a for each by default our last question in this video is how can an html collection be traversed so html collection by default does not have for each it needs to be converted into an array first and after that the traversal is possible by using for each method so that's all in this video if you like to watch html5 interview questions as well as css3 interview questions you can look for the links in the description be below thank you for watching and stay tuned for more updated videos thank you